Okay, so uh, here we are. Here we are, here we are, here we are. I feel like all of my videos that might start with me being quiet at the beginning, like, <sighs> I got exposed yesterday. I might as well just tell y'all. Part of me wants to be like authentic and all this good, great stuff, but I feel like within my authenticity also has to be some stability of authenticity where it's like aligned with where I'm going in life. But I want to make sure I'm always authentic with y'all. Duh. I've been saying that over and over. And so here we are. I was exposed yesterday. I kind of told y'all like on TikTok how me drinking and stuff was me running from God and blah, 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 blah. And it was kind of this thing that was happening in the dark. You know what I'm saying? I'm one of those people who keep it on a need to know basis. For example, my therapist knows everything because it's a need to know. I'm telling you because I know that you're going to be able to help me with what I'm going through. You know what I'm saying? But to just be sharing my information with people who aren't going to help me is just like pointless. But I was exposed. I was in jail. I don't think I... Oh, yeah, I did record a video. I just didn't post it. I might watch that back and actually post that video. Unless I say the same things in this one that I said in that one. Who knows? I might post both. Nevertheless. And um, I don't know what was said while I was in jail, but whatever was said exposed me, child. And people went uh, digging and people went uh, looking and they found everything, which was good. God had already said that I needed to come out of the trees. And I've been telling y'all to come, like, we've got to come out the trees and stop hiding. I knew I was going to have to be exposed, but I thought that I kind of got away from it. I thought like, okay, maybe I don't have to be exposed. The exposure was supposed to bring help Adam and Eve in Genesis 3 had to come out of the trees they were hiding and exposing it. They were covered in leaves, but it was ultimately so that God could kill an animal and give them new garments and get rid of the old garments, which was just death, right? So the exposure is supposed to lead to breakthrough. It's supposed to lead through to redemption and restoration, but... I thought like, okay, if I could, you know, maybe I just slipped through the exposure because, you know, had, you know, I just had the the, the intentionality to say, no, I'm not going to do these things. And no, I'm not going to fall to that. I told you guys about making better decisions. <sighs> but I didn't get past the exposure. We all know. Well, maybe y'all don't know because I didn't post a video. <laughs> but the people who watch my lives, y'all know I said that God intentionally sent me to jail. He sent me because I also had to minister to someone in there, but he also sent me for what was being produced in me and around me as well. You know what I'm saying? That drinking thing, man, it had a hold on me. Not in a way where it was like, it was like so toxic, not in an AA type of way, but in a very much spiritual warfare type of way where it just had me in a chokehold. Like, it was like I was, I, I put it this way once. I was like, I feel like I'm bleeding and no one can see me. Because obviously you can't show up as your worst self every day. I mean, people do it, but it's like when people are relying on you to be your best self because their best self is determined by how great you are, it's hard to not be your best self. So I showed up so many days pretending to be my best self and I was bleeding, like I was operating in my best self, but I just wasn't my best self. So it was more like dressing up and playing dress up rather than just operating in authenticity because I would have to go home. I would have to go in my own room and be in my own thoughts and in my own mess. Like I wish I could get out of here, but I'm stuck. There were moments where no matter how hard I prayed, stuff just wouldn't break because it ultimately starts in your mind. As I'm here today, and I actually didn't want, I was going to go live, but I'm learning to watch my pour. I find that when I pour out so much, I don't leave enough for myself. Even when I began writing the book and, and like putting it all together, I've been writing this book for years, but in actually putting it into the time for publishing, as I was pouring out other places where I should have been pouring into the book, I was then empty and then I couldn't pour into the book because I poured it out somewhere else. I'm also, though, shifting my perspective and the way that I'm thinking in this season. And I look at my pastor, T.D. Jakes, how he was writing books like this. He's coming out with a book called titled Disruptive Thinking. 
Listen, if you're going to get power over the mind, you need to get disruptive thinking first. Okay. 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 Power of the mind is my book if you're not hip. So anyways, I look at him and I said, he, no one knew. Well, I mean, his team, of course, but uh, no, no, millions of people did not know that he was writing a book. Yet every single Sunday, every single Wednesday, he was pouring, 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 even behind the scenes, traveling, going to other churches, going to events, doing leadership conferences, summits, and pouring and pouring and pouring while still being able to pour into his book. Life is simply about the decisions that we make. We can choose to succeed or we can choose to fail. And so... I wasn't in the place of being able to pour multiple places, but I'm in a season where I'm tired. I'm tired of looking in the mirror and seeing someone that I hate. I told y'all my therapist told me, he was like, why do you hate yourself? And I broke down crying because I'm like, oh my gosh, I do hate myself, blah, 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 blah. But I asked the question, why wouldn't I hate myself? Bear with me as we unpack this. Why would I not hate myself right now? When I look around and the person that I see when I close my eyes is not the person that I see staring back at me in the mirror. I look back at all the time I've wasted. I look back at everything that I've been through. I look at it, the mistakes I've made, the money I've wasted, the opportunities I've fumbled. I look back and I say, why? And so then I look in the mirror and of course I'm not going to like who I see. Yet I found that the problem in it all was me continuing to look back and I began to blame myself and beat myself up and kick myself while I was already down instead of doing as Paul said and forgetting what was behind me and moving forward. And so now I was in jail for seven days and it was intentional. God is the God of completion. Seven days, something was at work. On the eighth day being yesterday was my day of new beginning. So I was exposed and it was crazy because I knew that was the eighth day. I knew it was my new beginning and so much of this stuff all confirmed it. And even in the conversation that I was having amidst the exposure, dang near intervention, they were like, this is your new beginning. Everything that happened doesn't matter now. All of it's out on the floor. Begin now. You just got out of jail. It all starts now. God has put so much on the inside of me, and it's so obvious. You guys tell me all the time, and I'm humbled and I'm grateful for it. People confirm it to me. All of that good, great stuff, where it gets to, it's to the point, and this is for everyone. You know when the greatness is on the inside of you. It's just natural. You can't contain it. It gets to the point where you get so fed up with living beneath who God told you to be and on the living beneath the level that God told you to live on that you're just like, okay, I've got to get there one way or another. And that's where I'm in. I'm tired. I'm so, I, I've learned, I'm like Paul, I've learned to be content in every situation that I'm in, in jail. I learned to be content. Now, no one wants to be in jail. I was not happy in jail, you know? It was, it was like an, it, it was like I was in a dream, but I had enough mental fortitude to be content even while I was in jail, just by the spirit of God. I was content eating jail food, though I like fine dining, I was content to eat jail food. I like living lavishly, but I'm content enough to lower myself to my current circumstance. I'm content in every season and every situation, yet I'm agitated because I know that there's more. Oftentimes, the reason that we settle in life is simply because we don't know that there is more out there. But when you finally get to the place of knowing that there's more, you start to have this desire for it. Steve Harvey went on to say that next time you take a flight, book first class because once you get to experience the exclusivity of first class your brain will subconsciously begin to think of ways to get back to it coach won't seem the same and so i'm hungry yet i'm i'm i'm, I'm I, it's like i don't know what to do but i know what to do it's like i'm i know what to do but I, a part of me is scared to do it yet i believe it so much that i'm gonna do it but i don't even know what i'm saying i'm gonna do i'm just gonna do it because there's something at work on the inside of me a higher version of myself speaking to a lesser version of myself or if i could change that i would say a higher version of myself ignoring a lesser version of myself where the lesser version of me has no participation no part Part in what the higher self is doing the higher self is saying enough is enough i gave you time to recoup i gave you time to repair and now it's time for me to step up to the plate and pull us to our destiny are you equipped enough within your own self to pull yourself into the very thing you've been pushing yourself out of
I don't know. The problem is I do know. The problem is I know so much that if I listen to every word that I've spoken, if I actually listen to every message I've preached, if I've actually read everything I've written and applied it to my own life, I would maybe be further. And I say, maybe that's the point of it all, to have a treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellence of the power won't be of me, but what's at work in me. So I get no glory, but he does. Yet where do we come to the place of realization that if we are God's children and he placed him in us and we are him, that we in our fullness are enough? That maybe just maybe if we woke up and really believed we were enough, we would actually do it. Or maybe we believe we're enough so much that we don't do it. What? <sighs> or rather where? is the place that makes sense. I just know I'm tired. I know easy is over. The season of easy has expired and that God is requiring more from us in this season. That if we're going to get to what it is that we're believing him for, we've got to actually put action behind it. He'll do it if we put the action behind it. And I know that and I just say, Lord, okay. Excuse me. Why? I said coming off of the, the 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 roller coaster of 2022, I had to go through a season of recouping. I went through a breakup, uh, not a break. Well, I mean, I went through a breakup, but I went through a relationship. The breakup wasn't as bad as the relationship because I was out of the relationship before the relationship was over. Because you know what I'm saying. Anyways. I needed that period of, un of falling apart. I needed to get these DWIs. I needed to let that all unfold so that I could let it go. They were, child, uh, granted, they was up here talking about AA. And so my therapist has said this the first day, but obviously we unpacked it. Oh yeah, we don't need AA. We need to just address some other issues here that it's leading to that. And AA is not the issue here. And so while they were up here talking about AA, I'm like, um, wait, 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 hold on. I low-key lost my train of thought. Low-key, 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 wait, 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 wait. Um, I don't, oh, oh, oh. Uh, why they're talking about AA because you know I was drinking whole bottles let's be transparent I was drinking whole bottles I'm like you do realize number one I'm from Detroit <laughs> and then I was in Atlanta so it's you know we're one and the same I'm like you do understand that people my age drink a lot more than this like this is a lot for someone who's walking in ministry this is a lot for someone who knows that it's not good for you it's a lot for someone who has you know great purpose it's a lot in that capacity and that's just not how you know that's just not our our, our, I don't know, family dynamic. It just doesn't give that on this side of the family. On my dad's side, on part of the, my dad, on half of my dad's side, it definitely gives that. But anyways, it, although it doesn't give this for the person, this is very much underneath the average. You know what I'm saying? Um, my godfather was like, what about alcohol poisoning and all this? I'm like, you're right. But we just be drinking. Y'all know what I'm saying. Don't leave me out here hanging. For y'all who don't be drinking, shout out to y'all. That is good. But for the people that do, it's like, you know, let me turn it up. Let's just be real. I was like, do you? I, I, I'm 21. I'm glad I'm getting all of this stuff out of my system so soon. I started drinking at 14. My mom had left me in Michigan and she did. She was moving. She had moved to Atlanta. She went to move all of us there, but she left me and I didn't want to be left. I, 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 if, if I'm just going to be honest, me and my stepdad didn't have the best relationship at the time. And so she had left and left me with him and I just was not comfortable there. I didn't want to be in that. I wasn't talking to my dad at the time. So it was like she literally abandoned me. She chose herself over choosing her children and or her child and left me. You know, my brother, that's his dad. That's a little different. But I felt like she had just left me. She didn't tell me that she was moving. It was like randomly. She's like, yeah, I'm moving next week and then left. It was very selfish of her to be a mother to do something like that, right? I ended up drinking. It was this green bottle of Patron. <clears throat> green bottle. Y'all know the Patron brand. is the, the, the bottle was, I mean, the box is green. If you don't know, then praise God for your holiness. The, bottle, the box is green. They never touched it. They never drank it. I think it might have been a gift for them, and it's just been there forever. I would go in there, and I would sneak, and I would pour, and I knew no one was going to see it because no one was drinking it. And that was my escape from my current situation. It, it, it started then, nevertheless. It, it was one time that I even went to my friend's house down the street, and then we were drinking, and this man offered to buy us drinks. Then he ended up getting in trouble with the police, maybe being arrested. I don't know. And I ended up having to go to the hospital because I had drank too much, and it was hot, and I passed out, and all blah, 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 blah. 
that was my escape from my reality at that point. You know what I'm saying? And so I've been doing that from 17 to 21. I mean, 14 to 21, but I stopped because I, I my brain caught it correctly. Seven years. Seven years. completion oddly it was around this time of year that I started <sighs> you know God is intentional I literally was was studying with the topic of intentionality in mind and I was in Isaiah 45 and he says I form peace and create calamity. I make darkness. I create darkness. I make light and I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. Verse seven, I can't remember verbatim, although I think I low-key might have got it verbatim, I don't know. He's intentional. I, I would argue that it's all been intentional because he even goes on to say, I harden the heart of who I choose to that every single thing that I've been through has been intentional. Every struggle, every trial, every tribulation has been intentional to set others free. It's been seven years. And whatever God has been doing, it's been completed because it's been seven years. This is my year of completion. Next year is my new beginning. But on the, in the matter of days, this is my new beginning in days, but next year will not look like any year that I've ever seen. This year, it resembles other years, yet it's going to produce what the other years didn't produce. The other years won't look like the any other year I've experienced because it will be me operating in what's been produced and moving into another level of destiny. So I begin to understand that God is intentional and how in order to actually receive his intentionality, it takes us not blaming ourselves. We could take accountability for the stuff that we've done, everything we've been through, the mistakes we've made, but at the end of the day, accountability, accountability can quickly turn to blame if we're not careful about being quick. Take account quickly and move on. And I haven't been doing that. I needed this moment to unfold, getting it all out of my system now, so that when I finally am 40 years old, I'm not battling with the stuff I battled with now. Most people go their whole life still battling with it and they're in AA at 40 years old or they're in drug recovery at 40 years old. They're going through a divorce at 40 years old because they didn't learn how to communicate. They still don't have a relationship with family and friends at 40 years old because they never learned how to establish connections. They never healed from childhood trauma. So I'm glad that I'm getting it out my system now. And I'm fed up. I sensed it in the air about two weeks maybe before I got arrested. I came outside and it was in the air and I just sensed it. I was like, God is about to do something. And I'm not talking about jail. I'm like, Lord, if that was what you was finna do, you could admit, you could have kept it. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm kidding. I sensed it in the atmosphere. I know when God's going to do something. I mean, when you're spiritual, you know. And anyway, he reveals the stuff to his prophets first. I sensed it. I knew he was about to do something. Still is. I sensed it in the air. Every time I've sensed it in the air, it has come to pass, obviously. And so I sensed it. The air was just the, how it was. I don't know if I can articulate it. Articulate it. Divine things are hard to explain with human um, intellect and understanding. Nevertheless, I sensed it. They God, you're about to do something and life is about to speed up. I, I, other people who are in my circle, other anointed people in my circle, other people who are spiritually in tune in my circle confirmed. And I didn't tell them what I sensed myself. They just brought me what they sensed themselves. So it's clear God is up to something. I don't know where I was going, but I know where I am. The question.
is how are we going to show up? That's the question I'm ultimately even asking myself as I hate the person I see when I look in the mirror or rather dislike that person but love that person because I understand that person. I'm tired of that person. I say, how, how am I going to show up? I find that the only thing that has ever held me back is just the way that I've thought. I tell you guys that your, excuse me, your reality is a reflection of your faith, right? I said in the conversation, the intervention of yesterday, I was like, I tell people all the time, their reality is a reflection of their faith. As you can see, look at my reality is a reflection of my faith. I said, had I believed in more, I would not be here today. I had to end up moving in with my godparents. Uh, 2022 was crazy, okay? I, I don't know if I'm gonna post the video. I lost everything in 2022, lost everything. I came to Dallas and all was good and gravy. I spent every last dime, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. I spent stupid money, okay? I did, I'm not talking about like 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand. I spent some money, okay? I wasted it. I came here in the right spirit when I got here and immediately fell to everything that wanted to destroy me. I know all things work for good. I do, at one point I would argue that maybe had I just made different decisions, different things would have happened and that is true. Our destiny is set, it's up to us how fast we get there, yet all things work for good and we're forgetting what's behind us. Nevertheless, I came and I fell instead of deciding to move forward. So what was supposed to be a new beginning, what was supposed to be prosperous, ended up being another lesson because if you don't get it the first time, God is gonna send you through the class until you actually graduate knowing, getting the lesson that you can operate in the understanding of what you learned, meaning being a better person, being being more equipped. I, I don't know how to better say that. And so anyways, I got here and I fell. The drinking, the linking, the driving and drinking the the just the hanging out okay i just was wasting money the shopping and i wasn't focusing on what god brought me here to focus on i ended up having to move into this little youth program and maybe i won't post the old video since i'm kind of talking about it right now and it was like mind-blowing i had never been in my life been in a place where i did not where i needed people in that capacity I told y'all I've been on my own since 17, but I've been able to provide for myself. Like I was able to get places for myself to say food and all that good, great stuff. And I was in a place where I didn't have that. And I wasn't raised that way. It was just a different experience for me. Then I got in a relationship. Then me and my ex were staying together. Then that was traumatizing. Then me still having the baggage of my year not going how I wanted it to go. For me going up here to having to humble myself down to here, it was a drastic life change to me getting in car accidents and all this different stuff happening, then legal stuff. I mean, who wouldn't drink themselves to death? You know, glory to God for uh, uh, deliverance and all that great stuff. But after all of that, where was I going? I'm trying to wrap it in a bow. I'm coming off of uh, like, I had to heal. I, I really forgot where I was going, so we just go follow. Just follow me. I had to heal. And life took so many different twists and turns. I know what it is. I know where I was. So many different twists and turns that I had to heal. I just kept on trying to persevere and move forward and move forward and move forward, but I was tired. I was hurt. 2022 hurt me in so many different areas and that was the devil doing it on purpose that i might lose my faith that i might be broken down to nothing but all it did was prove to him how much of god's child i am and how much power i really do have there were nights where i had no food man shall not live by bread alone but on every word that preceded the mouth of god that i would just walk around speaking scripture being fed for our outward man is perishing day by day but our inward man is being renewed i would just walk around in scripture i told you guys how I would bring my drunken self into the presence of God. There were times when I would literally just have to walk around saying, greater is he in me, greater is he in me than he that is in the world. Devil, I'm greater than you. And I would just walk around building myself up. And so after everything I went through, when I looked in the mirror, I stopped, I started to forget who God said I was. Again, we're talking about our reality re being a representation of our faith. I didn't believe in myself anymore. I came here with so much faith. 
And obviously when God gives you gifts and God anoints you with something, I'm still operating it, but he, operating in who I am. But me operating in my gift and my anointing still wasn't enough to put me back into a position of believing that I was more than enough and that I could really do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I was low on the ground. I had lost myself. The, the, uh, the, the, what I can't ever think of the name of the live is something about the heart. Um, your heart. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's on my YouTube channel. It's something about the heart and it has fire in it. I told you guys how I lost myself. And so my now, that's simply because I lost touch with who I am, yet I'm finding that person while not knowing that person, yet aligning with God that he might show me whoever that person is because I'm tired. I've been living in shame. I've been living in pain. I've been living in a facade. I've been living under blame. I've been my worst critic. I've been my worst enemy and I'm tired. I say, heck, if you're at rock bottom, what more do you have to lose by stepping out in faith to become? The problem is that stepping out in faith to become is going to take us sacrifice but robin the bible says obedience is better than better than sacrifice well you're just not understanding that sometimes your obedience is the sacrifice i'm not about to go back in for tissue so mm -hmm. we just about to wipe it on the shirt wipe it on the shirt okay because i'm in my flow obedience sometimes is the sacrifice the sacrifice to say my oh my god probably told me the other day he was like well, at the intervention, he told me, he was like, um, you could have been finished this book. You could have, you already know it. You, you, you know it, it's all in you. You could have finished this book. I'm like, you're right. He's like, I know I am. I made excuses because oftentimes it's easier to be the lesser version of yourself. Despite how frustrating it may be, despite how annoying it may be, despite how tired you might be of waking up and seeing the same things and the same people and the same situations and the same circumstance and looking in the mirror and seeing the same face, despite all of that irritation with your present situation and circumstance, sometimes staying in what's lesser Staying in what's bad for you, staying in what serves you no good is easier than stepping into your destiny and what's best for you. I can put this into relationship terms. Oftentimes it's harder for us to leave a partner who's lying to us and cheating on us and who we know isn't equally yoked with us than it is for us to just, or, 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 or I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I'm basically trying to say sometimes it's harder to leave than it is to stay because we, it, we don't wanna go through the pain of letting go. We'd rather stay, okay? We would rather stay in that relationship and stay in that situation knowing it's not good for us than actually get up and get out of it. Because to walk away, it takes something. To get up and leave a relationship you know is no good for you and embark on the journey of living life alone until God aligns you with the person that's meant for you. It takes you saying, I know that I'm more than enough just by myself and I would rather be happy by myself than unhappy with company. Yeah, bear with me on the nose. And so oftentimes in order to step out of our lesser self, we can't speak the same way. We can't think the same way. We've got to change our circle. We can't go to the same places. We can't do the same things. Yet that's a sacrifice to us when we've spent our entire life living beneath who God called us to be. My pastor said, well, I don't know how he said it, but I'm going to say it, but know that it just had came from him first. He said that we don't often know what it looks like to be in grind mode because we're so used to being in stagnation. So when you get around people who are in grind mode, it seems odd because you're not used to grinding, you're used to being stagnant. But in order to grow, you must step out of your comfort zone and step into the unknown 
and trust that God is lighting up your path. You just gotta stay connected to him to grow. Now I'm back into my own self. I had been got back into my own self. I think back to my podcast episode that said growth comes from connection. And I think about how all of my stagnation simply came from me not being connected enough with God. Yet I find that none of that matters anymore. We're faced with the decision today and the opportunity today to make the decision to become better. They told me, who's they Robin? God told me, the Holy Spirit told me, Jesus told me, the Father told me, my circle told me, social media told me. Everyone has said, stop hiding and be real. God said, literally, humble yourself and I will exalt you. As long as you continue hiding, as long as you continue pretending, as long as you continue this act, you will never be able to get to glory. But if for one second you trust me enough to lose your life for my sake, that I will give it to you. I will show you it and you will find it in me. I promise that I will give you something your eyes haven't seen nor your ears have heard. Neither has entered into the heart of man. I will pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. I will get the glory out of your life. But in order for God to get the glory we can have none of it and that takes a stripping away of every single facade the image we've built every single thing we have put together our protective measures our self-preservation measures that are really just detrimental to our destiny it takes us wiping away all of what we're used to to step into a place of uncomfortable uncomfortability a place of uncertainty a place arguably of confusion though God is not of confusion he's of clarity but when you step into the unknown with God, sometimes you might be confused and the only clarity you will have is that God is with you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? So I told God, I said, Lord, I know in this season we have to have more action. I know in this season you're not going to give it to us, but we've got to go and take it. The Israelite people entered the promised land, a land that was theirs. It was promised to them, but they had to take it. So, Lord, I know it's mine and I got to go in and take it. I'm going to do it, but I can't say I really know what I'm doing. I'm just moving, not moving aimlessly. As Paul said, I do not fight like a boxer, aimlessly throwing punches in the air, but I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. I'm throwing punches that I mean to land. I'm aiming to win this fight. He goes on to say that after I've preached the gospel to you, I don't disqualify myself. I said, Robin, how long are you going to live in the pool of disqualification, preaching something that you won't walk by, speaking something that you won't live by, preaching faith that you don't actually believe in? When are you going to become it? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Maybe, just maybe if you became it, your reality would reflect your reality on the inside But where was your kingdom broken? And if you thought I was just talking about me, I'm asking you the question, where was your kingdom broken that made you forget who you are? I posted a video, it was actually a draft, but I posted it and I said, um, I don't remember the verbatim, but I said that people forget often that they have the power to change their entire situation, that they could wake up today and decide to create a new reality and it would be created because we have that power that if you're unhappy with your life and you're not, and you feel, if you're unhappy and unsatisfied with your life and you know that there's more for you, you are not bound to your current situation for we don't even walk by sight, but by faith, calling those things that are not as though they are. So if you really really want it to change your life and your situation, you can. That's why when it says, going back to the AA, I decided, and I'm not talking about yesterday, I went to jail for violating my bond. I didn't go to jail for another DWI. I just didn't do what they told me to do, so I went to jail. I had been made up my mind that this is not what I want to do because it's not who I am. We oftentimes focus on our actions when it's not about our actions, it's about who we are. Let me say that a little bit clearer. Oftentimes we say, I want to wake up earlier. I want to wake up earlier. So we set these alarms trying to wake up earlier, not realizing it's not so much about setting these alarms that our body will wake up earlier, but about thinking in a way that requires me to wake up earlier. Because if I'm going to beat the stock market opening, I can't open it. I can't wake up at 9 a.m. I've got to be up at 6 a.m. That way I can shower. That way I can brush my teeth, maybe get a little exercise and get some breakfast in my body so that when the market opens, I'm in a 
deep. I'm in a sound precision to execute what it is that I want for my life. So then I'm not focused on the actions, but focused on the becoming that will that will then produce the actions. And that's where we get stuck. We get stuck in the becoming and rather just the being. Maybe if we stopped trying to shrink and stop trying to dilute ourself, ourselves and diminish ourselves and, and minimize ourselves and just stood in our full potency, we wouldn't have to worry about falling to things that don't align with who we are because we're too busy being our authentic self. And so I say to y'all, I'm tired. I'm tired of being a me that is not real. I'm thankful for this season of my life. And it, the season, I sensed the season had came to an end. I already knew it. Again, we already know. If you're spiritual, you'll sense stuff before it is. Nevertheless, I'm thankful for this season. The season of peace. Although it wasn't really actually good peace, it was more like a, 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 a in, anywho. I'm thankful for the slow moments where life slows down. For the recouping season, the regenerating seasons. Where I can get my mind together that I don't have to worry about anything. And I can relax and I can unfold. But that season has ended. This is the season that we must become. I wanna say that we must just be, but you cannot go beyond what you know. So oftentimes you need to learn more to become more of who you are. So it's not so much about just being because sometimes we've been being a lesser version of ourselves, but becoming the highest version of ourselves, which then is already down on the inside of us. So then once we attain that highest version, which is really just doing as the prodigal son did in the Bible, which was come to himself, he asked his father, Father, give me my portion of, my, of the inheritance. He divided it all and gave it to him. The prodigal son left days later and wasted all that he had. A famine came. He saw even that homeless people and lowly people were being fed, but they didn't even want to feed him that. So he said, my father has servants. So if I just go home and ask to be a servant, I'll at least have something rather than nothing. He goes home. And as he's going back home, prepared to say father make me a servant his father sees him and runs after him happy that he's come to himself and returned home and says go get the best robe that we've got and clothes him in his royal garments now i'm gonna add a little flavor to the story and his royal garments because he's a king you just had to remember who you were We've wasted time, we've wasted resources, but it doesn't matter. God doesn't care about the mistakes. He doesn't care about what's behind us. All he cares is that we finally come to ourselves and have returned home. And now we can be clothed. Now we can get our fresh garments. Now we can come out of the trees, though we may be covered in leaves. We can finally get the new garments and become a new creation. And that's where I am today. I'm trying to finish this book, y'all. I gotta move. I gotta get my life. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I don't know. I'm over here trying to, oh Jesus. I'm over here trying to, um, that's why it's hard to create content. Like, what, what content am I going to post when I don't even like my life? You know what I'm saying? But here we are. Nevertheless, let, let's be real. Let's be real. Let's be real. This is the season to do. I promise you, God is my witness. If you can see it, you can have it. And if you believe it, it's yours. And your actions prove what you believe if i believe and i said this on live yesterday that the bank is gonna approve me for the what is it the mortgage to get the house i'm at the furniture store i'm on amazon i'm a best buy i've got everything on I'm, I'm even at apple i don't know about y'all i'm at apple i'm getting the whole thing together because i'm in expectation and my actions are a reflection of my faith Yet if I say, oh, yeah, they're going to approve it, but I'm just sitting and waiting, that means I never believed in the first place. 
They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord. Why would it say they should renew their strength if in the waiting they were doing nothing? And then we're done because I need to get some tissue, y'all. This is, it's, it's not giving. Okay. Why would they, why would he have said, we'll renew strength if I'm just waiting, waiting doesn't take any strength. Waiting just needs, takes patience. It just takes me waiting. He goes on to say, the strength will be renewed because I'm not telling you to wait and do nothing. I'm telling you to wait in expectation, wait in faith. And when you wait in faith, you have action partnered in the waiting season so that when it happens, it's not, oh, I've been waiting forever. It's finally here. But it's, I've been waiting. I've been preparing. I've been going forward. I've been tilling the ground. I've been preparing for the seeds or planting the seeds. This bunny just tried to throw it off. And now I'm ready. My strength is about to be replaced and all that good, great stuff. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the bunny. Threw off my message. But... God will give it to you. And I know it to be true. I know it. It's not a question. I know it to be true. No more games. This is the last year God is giving us the chance to turn it around. Are you going to take advantage of the opportunity or not? Are you going to be con continue to watch people with half your anointing, half your talent, half your capability, half your potential, doing 10 times more than you simply because they believe they could? Or are you going to dare to not only believe, but to let your actions be the proof of your faith? We're growing together. Um, I was told to be authentic so that people can grow with me. And I think about my pastor, T.D. Jakes how he authentically built his church. He didn't stand as, oh, as, as who he is today. He wasn't standing as that person. Obviously, as a man thinks he becomes, so on the inside, he was that person, but his outside didn't reflect his inside. He didn't show up to his outside pretending to be something he wasn't. He showed up authentically as who he was, knowing who he was becoming and shaping everything around him to the faith that was speaking on the inside of him. But he never once was fake. He was honest so that when people looked at him, they could understand that it's possible to come from nothing and get into something, to go from the valley up into the mountain peak, to go from darkness into the marvelous light. If you just believe and if you just put the action behind your faith, to the action with your faith, because you believe you have done and now you get to see the manifestation of God's glory in your life I am walking this thing with you so you can see it's possible it's possible at a young age to not be caught up in, in what the world's caught up in, the drinking and the smoking. I've drank, I've smoked, I did some things we'll talk about at a later date. I've had sex, sneaky links and had sex and all that good great stuff. I did it but that does not have to be my everything. That does not have to be my now. Ecclesiastes says that we will have to answer for everything we did in our youth. And though I went through it for a season, it doesn't have to be my 20s. Your 20s don't have to be spent living life just, you know, like we're dying tomorrow and how, you know, YOLO and stuff like that. You can live life and enjoy life with a sober mind. You can enjoy a good drink that does not have alcohol in it. There are more places to go than just the club. Experiences with people are not just about sex. In fact, sex is best when you already have a connection with the person in the first place. Sex is best when you're married. Conversation is better. Okay, we got to wrap it up. There is more. And I'm literally walking it. I'm not telling y'all it's easy. I'm just telling y'all it's possible. And if that's what you want for your life, you can do it. If you don't want to be one of those people who's drinking every day, all day. Okay, this is like, okay, we're gonna go like this. If you don't want to be one of those people who is drinking every day and doing stuff like that, you don't have to be. If you don't want to be one of those people who's smoking every day and that's all you do with your friends is, oh, what y'all doing? Let's link up to smoke. You don't have to be. You just have to be bold enough to go and find new people. I look at a lot of older people's life and where they failed was simply because they were too scared to let go of the people they had to find out the people that God had for them. Peter, 
When Jesus said you will no longer be a fisherman, but fisher of men, he left everything, left his business, left his employees, left his customers. He left. I'm not saying he dissolved the business. He just left it behind. That's the benefit of having people around you that you can trust. That when God says it's time to move on, you don't have to cancel out what you were doing. You can transfer it to someone else. That's a message for another day. But Peter let go of everything he knew to find what God had for him. And it was much better than anything he ever experienced. Are you willing to let go of everything keeping you bound? Whether it's people, whether it's your own way of thinking, whether it's your own habits, whether it's your own addictions, whether it's your own struggles whether it's your own patterns, whether it's your own routines, whether it's your own conversations that you're having with yourself, whether it's the energy that you allow around you, whether it's the places you go, whether it's the things you do, whether, 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 whether life changes just like the weather. That's why you have to be stable. So no matter what switches up, you always stay the same, but you can only do that how? By the spirit, Robin, prove it. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today, today, and forevermore, meaning that if we are to ever be stable in the midst of instability, we cannot do it of ourselves because humans change in one moment. We're saying Hosanna and another we're saying crucify him, but in the spirit, we can stabilize ourselves to be this is who I am. Despite the temptation that's coming up against me, I don't have to fall to that temptation. Despite the negative thoughts, I don't have to listen to the negative thoughts because I'm stable. No, that didn't work out, but that does not contradict who God said I am because I'm stable. I walk by faith and not by sight. This didn't work out. Maybe I just didn't hit the right well. This didn't work out. Maybe I just didn't hit the right well. I'm reminded of Jacob. But finally, along the way, you will hit the right, the right well and the water will flow. It'll flow, it'll flow, it'll flow. Our cup runneth over. It'll be so much that it flows from the head on down to the beards and down to the garments and the skirts on down to everything that is attached and connected to you because this thing is generational. That's why it is so hard for you. That's why it's so hard for me because it's not just about myself. The enemy probably wouldn't work so hard if it was just about little old Robin, but it's about everything connected to me. It's about generations being set free. It's about family bloodlines being changed. It's about generational curses being broken. It's about minds being renewed and restored. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's about souls being saved. This is not a game. That's why we forget what's behind us because we understand that the battle was intense. That the enemy did do his best to take us out. That he threw his best shot. He came with his best strategy. But even the lesser version of ourself did the best that they could. So I count myself not to have apprehended or having yet been perfected. Instead, I choose to press forward and focus on the glory that shall be revealed. The goodness that is ahead of me because... God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should ever repent. So if he said that I was destined for greatness, just because it's taken a little while doesn't mean it's over. In fact, it's just begun. What are you going to do in this season? Are you going to rise? Are you going to ascend? Or are you going to fail? simply because you didn't believe.